You're watching ESPN's Feast Week, presented by Lowe's. This is the Shriners Children's Charleston Classic. Today, Boise State takes on Temple. This begins day two of action. The semifinals are set. St. Bonaventure versus Clemson follows Broncos and Owls. Hello, everybody. Derek Jones and Tim Welsh with you this afternoon. Boise State and Temple meeting for the first time ever. Tim, as we take a look at this game, Caliph Battle for Temple, how does he turn things around after the start yesterday? Well, two things have to happen for Caleb Battle. Number one, he's got to play harder. He's got to work to get his shots. He's got to get other people involved as well because yesterday Clemson took away his shots at the rim because they sent the second defender at him. So when that happens, he has to free up other people. He has to be aware of that and make sure he makes the extra pass. Then scoring will happen naturally for him because he is a big-time scorer. On the other side, Emmanuel Acott, career day for him in the loss to St. Bonaventure. He came out of high school out of Canada, went to Arizona. People thought he'd be a one and done, and here we are five years later, and yesterday was a career high. So it looks like he's on the uptick. 6'8 point guard, long athletic shot right over the top of St. Bonaventure's defense yesterday. Down the stretch, faded a little bit, but a guy who can make shots in a lot of different ways and also a big-time defender. Both teams trying to figure out how to turn things around and grab a W here today. Day two of the Shriners Children's Charleston Classic underway as the Broncos take control. First ever matchup between these two programs. As we'll go through the starters momentarily. Armouche right away. Milad and Armouche going to work in the low blocks. I like that what Leon Rice does with Armouche. He kind of misdirects him directs him opposite the ball and then they flash cut him right through the middle of the paint. Forrester working down low against Armush. The shot by Battle missing. So Caleb Battle missing on his first shot. Shaver Jr., Dutrieve, Acott, Key Jab, and Armush. The five for the Broncos. Dutri had a nice game yesterday against the Bonnies. Finds room for a three. Rattles off the rim. He gets it back. Can't finish. And the tie up down low. And while we'll the jump ball, the possession arrow points in favor of the Owls. Good early sign for Temple. Showing a little effort on the defensive end. Got up and contested. Got on the glass and offensively moved without the ball, made the extra pass. They have to continue to do that. Yesterday, the last 10 minutes, a lot of one-on-one. -on -one. Damian Dunn leans in. His shot falls off the right side of the rim. He gets a tap back to him and evens the game at two. A good second effort. Jake Forster kept that ball alive. Temple playing with a lot of early energy. Temple in the 75-48 to 48 loss to Clemson yesterday. Started out reasonably well, but tailed off thanks in part to hot shooting from the Tigers and also strong defense as well. Acott, who had 24 yesterday, swings a pass into the corner. And the three is good from Abu Kijab. A big part of yesterday's game, Kijab picked up his fourth foul with a technical. Third foul with the technical, then he immediately got his fourth, had to sit on a long period of yesterday's game against St. Bonaventure, and then that's how Bonnie took control of the game. Jeremiah Williams is stripped. Emmanuel Acott on the move. Three-point lead early for the Broncos. Kijan, no look feed, nicely done. Armouche throws it down. That was an issue yesterday, playing the pick and roll for Temple. They had major problems playing the pick and roll, the pick and pop, the pick and slip. And they've got to clean that up. Corner three, that's in from Sage Tolbert the third. A good ball movement, good spacing that time. Tolbert was ready to catch and shoot. That trims it to a two-point game. Three-point shooting certainly will be a storyline in this game, especially on the side of Boise State. The errant pass by Acott. Dunn steps in. And Acott left the floor with really nowhere to go. He's got to turn and maybe face, shoot that ball. Dunn, room for a three. Short, 
tipped in the air and retrieved down low. Fighting down low, the layup is in, plus the foul for Tolbert. So Tolbert with an opportunity to put the Owls on top for the first time today. Well, Aaron McKee just wants his team to fight, to play hard, to play tough, like he did when he was a player, long-time player in the NBA. And a lot of that was not there yesterday in the second half against Clemson. They were deflated and really didn't have the pop to get themselves back in the game. But sometimes you get embarrassed like that, and you go back to the hotel, you put the film on, the film doesn't lie, and you wake up and say, let's do things the right way today. 6-0 run for the Owls. As Tolbert finishes off the three-point play, it's an 8-7 lead for Temple. They had a lot to think about, Tim, after the loss yesterday. Shot 35% from the field against Clemson. Acott open for three. That's good. There's just no rotation, and good job by Boise. Quickly reversing the floor. They have excellent spacing. Acott, that was a layup for him from three. He had a career-high six three-pointers yesterday. Keep in mind, Boise State had missed 35 of 42 three-pointers through their first two games and then shot it much better, hit nine in the loss yesterday. Shaver Jr. down the lane and scores off the window. Uh, Temple, unfortunate. They got the ball up on their rim, just couldn't bring it home and then didn't run back on defense. Ball slapped away from Tolbert, down the floor. Hijab had a step, but now a steal here by Dunn. Dunn, one-on-one -on -one against Armouche, tried to bank it in, the follow is in, courtesy of Jake Forrester. Good follow and hustle by Forrester. Really good. Loose passes, though, on the perimeter for Boise early. Not really sharp with their execution in the half court. Acott, a little bit of a shoulder shake. Shaver Jr. for three, high arcing. The Rainmaker is in. We'll get a whistle here, 15-10 your score. The threes are firing up here in Charleston. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Shriners Children's, the most amazing care anywhere, and Dollar General, where you save time and money every day. That looks spectacular. That's a shot from Delaney Oysterhouse right down here on Calhoun Street. I'm going to make note of that because that looked exceptional. I might pay a visit to that after the games are done today. I want to apologize to Rich Hollenberg, though he did return his text when he invited me there last night. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I missed it, but <laughs> it's called ghosting. When yeah. you don't, when, when you don't ask, ask your best friends to go to dinner with you when you're on the road for the first time in a year and a half. It's just great to be on the road, though, and be in the environment. The environment yesterday was pretty special. And, uh, you know, I know you know we're just the announcers, but our juices get flowing when we're at courtside. There's a full building. There's a lot of energy. It's good basketball to be, playing, to be played. And uh, these two teams today, I just made mention to you, they came out early with a lot of heart and a lot of energy and uh, a lot of fight. And a steal. Key jab trying to fight off Nick Jordan. One of the things that hounded Temple yesterday, ball security, as Jaleel White will pick up the foul. He's into the game, that's his first. Aaron McKee has got a team, of a lot of guys that played, but they're still a young basketball team. So he's trying to find out who, find out what he has. And I, these, these games are good for that. And they will grow and benefit no matter what their record. And I've already seen an improvement in their, just their focus today early. Team defense, energy on the glass, toughness, chasing down loose balls. Perfect example, Forrester getting it done there. Jordan for three, that misses. It's a rebound off to Acott. We'll see Ty Strickland into the game momentarily for Temple. But a career day himself. Turnaround Jay trickles out from Pavle Kuzmanovic. Temple basketball. And that pass, I presume, intended for Nick Jordan. Instead, it hits the scorer's table. A lot of unforced errors, Tim, that we've seen the last two days now from Temple. Well, that, 
That's when you have an, an ex great player as the head coach. He's just saying to himself, I've played the game for many, many years. I've never thrown a pass like that. What are you doing? Just I mean, keep it simple. You got to keep it simple. Don't make, try to make the home run play. And can't be throwing the ball backwards in the half court. Four turnovers for the Owls. A caught entry pass. The bank is open. Off the glass, largest lead of the game as Lucas Milner goes window. And it's a seven point lead for the Broncos. Have to stay attached on that pick and roll. The big guy over the top. White finds Strickland. Swings a pass into the corner for Battle. Battle, good defense by Shaver Jr. Shot clock under 10. Strickland, double teamed, in trouble. To four, Jordan, and that's a travel. Here you see on the pick and roll, they stay with the dribbler. Three defenders stay with the dribbler, and then they don't recover. Strickland does not rotate down on the backside. Now, if you're going to stay that long with the dribbler, with the second defender, you must rotate on the backside with some help. Five turnovers for Temple. Acott. Shaver Jr. Outside the kick, key jab three, no good. And the rebound taken by Jordan. Temple, well, another turnover. The Owls have more turnovers so far. Six than made field goals. Four, not great. Well, there's not much to say. I mean, they're playing hard, but you, you have to accompany playing hard with playing smart and being fundamental. And you know, right now, Temple has just been sped up in the half court. Seven point lead for the Broncos. Dutri swings it. Shaver Jr. three. That misses, a little bit long. White rebound. This was the problem Temple ran into yesterday. When they got hit with a run, they could not respond. Jordan. Battle, trying to create some space. Attacks baseline, launches from the baseline, and a foul, he got pushed on the attack. Battle will go to the stripe for a pair. Well, Caleb Fowles is just trying to make something happen. A little backdoor cut, and just attacks, key, ta key jab on the, off the bounce and does a good job of getting in the line. Battle, a transfer from Butler. Made his way back closer to the East Coast with the Philadelphia-based Temple. And that free throw for Battle representing the first points for Temple in over three minutes. Well, averaging 24 per game coming into yesterday, but Clemson just locked him down. And every time he beat his man off the dribble, which he is terrific at, they sent a second and sometimes even a third defender at him before he could get comfortable and get, get into his shot motion. So he's going to try to find a little space and make a quicker decision and also be ready to pass the ball. Najee Smith, he turns it over. White throws it down with the right hand. Well, that's one way Temple can score, and I think they need to do that. They can press, they can attack a little bit more, they can trap. They've got such great length and athleticism, they have to use it to their advantage. Four straight. From the Owls. They've cut it to a three point game. Shaver having trouble. Good job by Battle cutting off the lane on Shaver. And a reach in. Over the top, a little defense turned into offense. Just what Temple needs because they've struggled in the half court. Foul picked up by the Owls. They're charging back, though, down by three. The Boise State Broncos out of the Mountain West trying to make their way back into the NCAA tournament. Last did so in 2015. Head coach Leon Rice certainly has a lot of experience leading programs in here with his Boise State club. He's looking to get them back into the NCAA tournament. Well, you saw them go toe-to-toe -to -toe with St. Bonaventure yesterday. They're a team that's built 
to be in the top part of the Mountain West. There's no doubt about it, Leon. Uh, last year, it looked like they were going to have a chance to get an at-large bid, and then down the stretch, they they uh, didn't finish the way they wanted to, but got into the postseason. I think this is a team will be right there on the doorstep again this year. And again, a lot of international flavor with their recruiting. Being a part of the Mountain West, effectively attacking that aspect of their program. That ball, an errant pass, the officials get together, and now they'll change the call. Good teamwork from the three Johns. Hampton, Gaffney, and Higgins working together early. There's a foul. There's a grab on the arm. They missed that, but... Sometimes when the play comes at you just like that, Derek, we're, we had John Gaffney's view, it's hard to see it. You're so close, you don't get a good angle, but there's a good shot out of the baseline out of bounds, and Temple did not rotate over to the shooter. Kuzmanovic nails a three to end four straight from Temple. Six-point lead for Boise State. By the way, out of that media timeout, it was Emmanuel Akpomo who picked up the foul for Temple. That was his first of Strickland going to work. Strickland lost the ball, stays with the Owl. Seven seconds to shoot. Tim, do you expect any bit of a letdown here for Boise State after, after the atmosphere of yesterday as battle strokes through a three? Well, having coached some teams in these tournaments, you know, the focus has to be mainly, listen, these games are just as important as the games yesterday. They all count on your schedule. I mean, everybody wants to win this tournament, but the main goal is to go home with as many wins as you can, and that's why you just got to refocus. You can't dwell on yesterday, and it seems like... Boise has come ready to play, focused. Uh, a little sloppy in the last few minutes, but you see the scrum here. These teams want it. Those 50-50 balls in the tie-up. Armouche able to get in there. Good hustle by the Owls as well. Sometimes ugly offense or good defense leads to this. Forrester has been all over the place early on for Temple defensively, and you see the dive there. Armush, he dives into the loose ball area. You better be ready to come up with a couple bruises. Kuzmanovic. Dutri now trying to go to work against Strickland. Key jab with five. Down low, Armouche again with a dunk. Nice job by Kijab. Just drew the defense. Temple a little overhelped. He had his head up. And Armouche with the soft hands and the big finish. Battle already ahead of his offensive pace from yesterday with five points. It'll be a foul on the check of Battle. You see just the dribble drive and the late rotation. When, when that happens, Sage Schobert's got to rotate over because when Forrester slides over to help on the dribble penetration, he leaves Armush wide open. That's it's called help to helper, and it's pretty basic defense. Shaver Jr. picks up the foul. That's his first. He heads out of the game. Tolbert. He was open and then got stripped of the basketball. Broncos holding a five-point advantage. Key jab turns and a player control foul called against Abu Key jab. Key jab with the little swim stroke hook down the baseline. And Leon Rice likes his guards to be able to post up both Key jab and Acott. That time he got caught. John Gaffney on the call. Good call. Key jab, who was in foul trouble yesterday, in foul trouble again today. He has two. Strickland has been quiet offensively so far. Trying to get around Armouche. And a whistle here against Boise State. Tyson Dagenhardt into the game for the first time. He picks up the foul. That's number one on him. And 
And we'll get play going the other way. Again, the Owls, it seems like whenever they're able to get something going, it's, they can't string it together as the foul called there against Aquaman. Well, yeah, that was uh, an illegal screen on a little baseline out of bounds. You know, that's not as bad as some of the loose passes. At least they're trying to set some screens. They're trying to free up their teammates on the offensive end. Boise State still holding five. Dutri with the kick. Kuzmanovic now feeds Acott. Nine minutes left to go, first half. Armouche hanging in the air, goes glass, can't get it, gets it back, falls to the floor, saves it for an Acott three. Got it. Well, Armouche gets at least one point out of those three because he kept that ball alive, dove on the floor, just throwing his body around, and Acott delivered. Eight-point edge, biggest of the game for Boise State. Dunn trying to pick his way through the Boise State defense. Nice drop down low. Aquamaro finishes off. Nice look by Damian Dunn. Does a great job of just keeping the dribble, keeping his head up, waiting, waiting, waiting to find the open man. Acott with the feed to Armush. Armush banging down low. Jumper is in from Kuzmanovic. Well, nice job by Leon Rice. He's giving Kuzmanovic, Kuzmanovic bitch, some major minutes today. He's a good step-up shooter. Backdoor feed to Battle, and his floater is in. Kayla Battle with seven. Good job reading the defense, moving without the ball, not trying to find everything on your own off the bounce. Acott, no look feed in the corner. Dagenhart blocked. Armush tracks it down. Only have five to shoot. Acott, gonna have to make a move here. Down low, Armush puts it up, and he's fouled with one second to shoot. And he'll get a pair of free throws coming up out of the timeout. Six-point lead for the Broncos. Now you better put a body on this guy, or maybe two or three bodies, and then presence of mind, get it outside, pitch it outside, and then slam it home. Boise he ready today. The Temple basketball team had the opportunity to meet with Shriners Children's patient Cole from the Shriners Hospital in Philadelphia. Cole got a chance to spend the day meeting the team and hanging out at the Temple basketball facility. A tremendous experience for Cole and the team and another example of all the great work that Shriners Children's does for the community. Get a look there at Caliph Battle. Far better performance from him today, Tim, than what we saw yesterday against Clemson. Well, he's putting himself in some better spots. He's not out in the top of the key, just trying to go one-on-one -on -one and is driving into a second and a third defender. They've got him spaced out. A good job by Aaron McKee kind of a, to adjust his half-court offense and put Battle in a little bit of a more open spot where he can attack from the wing and baseline and then go one-on-one -on -one and then make his moves. Armouche, no good on the first free throw. By the way, that was Akpamo's third foul. So he's in foul trouble along with on the other side of it for Boise State. Key jab who has a pair. One out of two for Armush. He's been a big factor here early on. Seven point lead for Boise State. Approaching seven minutes left to go in the first half. Battle of one and two basketball teams. That's Battle driving, and we'll go the other way. Caleb Battle diving in, but Dagenhart able Just to a, draw the charge. A real good move, but he's got his head down and doesn't see the defender. You've got to have eyes up, and he scores. Sometimes they're not looking at the basketball, but they're looking at the floor, and they're going so fast that they're basically out of control and cannot slow down when that secondary defender approaches. Number one on battle. Shaver, that's such a quick first step. But the close out there, three by Acott, that hits. Emmanuel Acott 
Double-digit lead for the Broncos, biggest of the day, plus 10 over Temple. Well, a little reminiscent of yesterday. St. Bonaventure did a good job contesting him, but he doesn't need a lot of room with all that size, and Sage Tolbert was right up in his grill, but Acott just delivered over the top. Dunn trying to find some space. Feeds Tolbert. Tolbert draws the whistle on the attack against Dagenhart. So Tolbert will make his way back to the bench. Dagenhart, that's his second. That was actually called on the floor, not on the active shooting. Max Rice in for the first time, and officials will go over to the scorer's table to take a look and confirm. And it is Dagenhart who picks up the second foul. Number six against Boise State, one away from a one and one. The officials, I think, oh boy, Dunn got away with a clear push there on Shaver Jr. As Williams hops into the lane. Baseline attack. Hanging, can't score. Dunn gets it back, puts it on. A oh, good second and third effort by Damian Dunn. I mean, Temples continues just to drive the ball from the baseline all the way to the rim. And Boise starting to adjust to help early. They've got to be aware when the help comes, there's open shooters on the perimeter opposite. Acott. Checked by Jordan. And a foul. This will be against Jordan. It's number one for the freshman. This is not an experienced Laden Temple team. The college basketball analytics website, KenPom.com, has teams ranked based off of experience. Temple, out of 358 teams, ranks 355 in terms of experience. So that kind of gives you an idea what their roster composition is as Dagenhart heads out with the two fouls. But as Aaron told us the other day, no one cares. That's right. You know, he said none of our opponents <laughs> care about that. And but well, it's something to talk about, and it's a, it's the real deal. It is what it is. That's why I think as a coach, it, that's you have to look at that and say, okay, how do you coach your team? You know, what do you expect from them? You expect excellence all the time, but certainly I think playing these games, you're going to get a lot of experience for them, but also for yourself on what you need to do to adjust and to improve as you head towards December and January. Acott, kick out. Shaver, baseline J, trickles out. And Armush battling down low. Boy, he's been a handful for the Owls. Well, he's just relentless. Every, he tries to get every offensive rebound, and the problem is Temple is not putting enough bodies on him. And you see, he comes loose on the backside. They rotate out to contest the shooter, but nobody puts a body on him. Acott gets the drop from Armush. Shaver, baseline drive, too strong. Done. out of the pack with it. Temple down by eight, 31-23. Williams will try a jumper from the baseline, can't hit from the left side. The follow by Jordan, too strong. Key jab, no look feed, and that's a turnover. Well, Temple's doing a good job on the offensive glass, at least attacking the offensive glass, but they, they're not converting. And you know, a lot of teams, what they like to do is when they get the ball off the offensive glass, they immediately turn and look out and try to find open shooters. I think Temple can free up some of their perimeter guys, including Caleb Battle, after they get an offensive rebound to turn and try to find him at the three-point line. Hicks pops out for three. Too strong. Tip back outside to Jeremiah Williams. White. And that's a double dribble. Another turnover for the Owls. 
late here in the first half. Now White just trying to make something out of nothing down there in the baseline. And again, they've got to just try to make the extra pass. They're putting the head down, just trying to drive all the way to the rim, and there's just too much traffic. Dutri. Acott hounded back near the midcourt line. Acott three, missed it with two to shoot. Tip back outside, and then off the hand of Dunn. 3.33 left to go, first half. Boise State and Temple going back and forth. Eight point lead for the Broncos. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Lowe's. Well, Derek, I just mentioned this guy, I would pay to watch him, Maladin Armush. He moves without the ball, he plays with a purpose. Leon Rice puts him in a great spot to finish, to attack. He's got very good feet on the defensive end of the floor and just has a little smile to go with it, but then he, timeout's over, the smile is gone, and he plays with a scowl. And uh, But he understands how to play. It's a good mix, this team. I like this Boise team. You've got Shaver that can make shots from the outside. You know, Acott is really starting to prove that he can be a big-time point guard at his size. Uh, key job is a good wing player who can make shots as well, and they play rock-solid defense. Appeared in the NIT last March. We're bowing out in the quarterfinals to eventual NIT champion Memphis. Armush does a lot of the dirty work for this team. Hook shot. Can't finish off the possession. Well, that was a good look with the left, but Temple got up and deterred. Strickland. Baseline and a turnover. Battle looked like he was trying to throw that one in the lane. Bounce pass, Smith puts it home. That's what happens. Bad shot or a turnover, a bad decision turns into that because everybody stands and watches, and Boise off to the races, and Battle just left the floor with nowhere to go. So Najee Smith makes it a 10 point game again. Temple, and a three minutes plus scoring drought. The runner by battle is no good, but a foul on the way. Tomorrow we'll have another giant game in the Big Ten. Number seven, Michigan State takes on number four, Ohio State at the Shoe in Columbus for first place in the Big Ten East. It's a noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific start on ABC and the ESPN app right after college game day on ESPN. Monster game in the Big Ten coming up on Saturday. That's number two against Shaver Jr. As Coach McKee mixes things up for Temple. Tolbert the third back in, Forrester back in as well. With Battle at the stripe. Well, Marcus Shaver's done a pretty good job on Caleb Battle, but that time they opened up the floor, and that's where the, he needs when he needs to go one-on-one, -on -one, he can do that from the top when the, when the defense is spread out. And he does a great job of just kind of creating that contact to get to the line. Second by Battle is in as well. Eight-point ball game. Battle with nine. Dutri gets a screen. Now gets rid of it. Under 10 to shoot. Down to six. Jumper spins in for Acott. Well, Acott at 6'8", he does a real good job of kind of sizing up the defense, understanding what they're going to give him, and that time just created some space with the step back. Derek Alston, Jr., one of the key players for this Boise State program, graduating and moving on. As a foul will be called here, or actually checked out a travel against Strickland. And Acott certainly trying to do his best to fill that void now for Boise State. That's turnover number 12, by the way, for the Owls. 
Sloppy first half of basketball for Temple. Acott. Gets it right back from Armush. Left-handed hook is in. Well, a little two-man game, Derek, like you're playing in your driveway with your big brothers. They cleared out the wings, and they played a little two-man game at the top, and then the big fella, Armush, with the nice delivery. He's doing a little bit of everything in this first half. Hicks three, long miss. Kuzmanovic rebound, but he gets tied up. Nicely done there by Zach Hicks. And the basketball will stay with Temple. Temple, though, continues to struggle to find some open looks. You see, Boise has this lead because they're getting better shots on almost every possession in the half court. Catch and shoot for battle. That rims out. Loose, and Boise stayed out of the mix. Dutree. Gets it back from Armouche. Feeds Acott. And that ball would have headed out of bounds, but it hit the near side official and stayed in play. But we'll get a side out here coming up. We'll get a stop on the floor. Under a minute left to go. Boise State up 12. Elsewhere in South Carolina, the Myrtle Beach Invitational taking place. You can check that out on the ESPN family of networks this weekend. Tim, Indiana State, oh my goodness, over Old Dominion yesterday. Well, they better be ready because Oklahoma looked pretty good in the second half last night. Porter Moser has a young basketball team taking over in his first year for Lon Kruger. Uh, East Carolina gave them everything they wanted, but clearly a good field as uh, Oklahoma tries to rebuild their program. Kuzmanovic. High arcing three on net. Like that was like no effort at all. He just, he's not even sweating out there. He just kind of <laughs> stepped to the top and the rainbow three. Nice and easy to put Boise State up by 15. 40 to 25. Done. Harassed. Strickland has not been in the mix here offensively in the first half. He has no points so far. He'll try a three and score. So Strickland ends a five-minute plus scoring drought. He's tough. He get his own shots pretty easily out there, and he needed that. Down to ten for Acott. Kuzmanovic. The kick to Acott nearly stolen. We have a sign out here with five seconds to shoot. Acott tossing in, gets it back from Armush. Three to shoot. Have to let it go. Smith for three. Got it to end the half. A Hail Mary answered by Najee Smith. And boy, what a gut punch to the Temple Owls going into the locker room. Five straight from the Broncos in the half. Well, since we've been in Charleston, it's been beautiful. But for Temple, when it rains, it pours. <laughs> and they just can't catch a break here. They make a, a pretty good effort to get the steal and just a gut punch, as you said. Five. Boise on fire. Five straight buckets to end the first half for Boise State, up by 15. Back and forth first half early, but the Broncos close it out with a flourish. You're watching ESPN's Feast Week presented by Lowe's. This is the Shriners Children's Charleston Classic at the half. Boise State 43, Temple 28. This game will be followed by semifinal round action. St. Bonaventure Clemson, the other semifinal, Marquette, West Virginia, taking place later this evening. Derek Jones and Tim Welsh with you, and second half action just about set to get started. 
Tim, what did you see out there in the first half, and how can Temple get back into this? Well, first and foremost, Temple's got to run better offense again. I mean, they're just taking a lot of contested shots. A lot of that's because of Boise's tough defense, but a lot of that is because Temple is impatient on the offensive end, a little careless with the basketball. And then defensively, they've got to get out on the perimeter. They've left too many people wide open. Boise's made some tough shots, but they also have made, down, made open shots. And then in the middle of the floor, they have not taken care of business around the rim, around the pick and roll. Armush has really had his way in the lane. They do a great job of spacing the floor, making the extra pass. Temple's got to rotate on the backside much better. Listen, Temple's played hard. They've got in the mix on the glass, but Boise's just played a little bit harder and a little bit smarter. It's been a solid first half for Boise State, but it was culminated with an unlikely source of points. A long distance three from Najee Smith to beat the buzzer. And through the first 20, turnovers a big part of Temple's problems. Turnovers because they're careless with the basketball and uh, they're not in sync. And they're a new team, they're young, uh, sure, a lot of those things, but these teams practice all summer and they need to just get organized and keep it simple. A couple of little plays, a couple of certain set plays if Boise takes their main sets away they need to counter and just make good solid basketball plays instead of just putting your head down and going right to the rim. A chunk of those 12 turnovers and you saw the 14 points that Boise State was able to get out of those 12 turnovers many of them unforced errors. Acott at work. Five to shoot for Dutrieve as runner short. Gets it back though. Keeps the possession alive for Boise State. Dutrieve three short. Loose gets it back again. Armush, power dribble, lays it up and in. Well, there's effort, and then there's second effort. And right now, Boise, the second, the third effort, the ability to get up on the glass, pitch it back out to an open man, take their time, wait for Temple to make a mistake. That time, Armush made a pay. Before the loss yesterday against Clemson, Temple had won five straight in the Charleston Classic. That came to an emphatic end yesterday on the drive by Dunn, a whistle, and that may very well put Dunn at the line. We'll see when that call was issued, and it will be a shooting foul as Acott picks up his first. So Damian Dunn of Kinston, North Carolina. Well, this is a Serious danger time right now for Temple after watching them yesterday because they got down around 16, 18, 20 points, and that was it yesterday. They kind of packed it in and had bad body language and just kind of played out the rest of the game. They've got to get down and dirty now, use their length, try to force Boise in some tough shots, maybe get out and transition off the misses or a turnover. So two from Dunn, who had been perfect from the line heading into the Shriners Children's Charleston Classic this weekend. No look feed down low, Armouche saves it, was headed out of bounds. Shaver, back outside, but only seven seconds to shoot. Acott's gonna have to make a move here. Down to three, launches a three, off, tip, and battle, out battles. Armush. Good job by Temple on that defensive set. To the paint. Hook shot right hand from Akpomo misses. A much better job on that last possession defending the pick and roll in the, in the middle of the floor. Key jab. Hops in the lane. His shot is good, but a whistle also in the mix. And it will be charged to Sage Tolbert the third. The bucket obviously not counting there. Side out coming up. There's also a flop warning attached to that for Damian Dunn. Uh-oh. It's our first of the weekend, the dreaded flop warning. Acott. Crossing over, lobs it to the rim. Armush can't finish it off. Williams now peels off. He'll try a jumper. That's no good. Acott, ball tipped around and grabbed by Dutree. Shot 
Shaver. Three ball up. Key jab hits. Three ball up. Nobody home on the defensive end. He could have counted to three, and nobody came out to contest. The lead expands, largest of the game for Boise State at 18. Dunn shows the ball one way, puts it up the other, can't finish. Dunn's doing a good job of trying to just get it to the rim, but can't draw the foul. Dutree, why not? Three more. Timeout, Temple. 21-point lead for the Boise State Broncos. It's a 6-0 run, courtesy of back-to-back -back threes. And Aaron McKee has seen enough. He's seen enough, but he's got to get into his team. They've got to play a little harder, a little smarter. A couple of wide open threes on back-to-back -back possessions. Boise saying, this is too easy. And this tournament, a part of a huge run of college bas basketball on ESPN. It's Feast Week through November 28th. That's a lot of basketball. And how about Dickie V? We'll be back on the call next week for none other than UCLA Gonzaga, number one versus number two. And Richard, welcome back, pal. Glad you're back on your feet and recovering nicely. Such a great bit of news to hear that he'll be back in the mix for that game. A rematch of that sensational national semifinal in the Final Four last season and hearing his voice again it's just right for college basketball well, there's no doubt about it and we spoke about it yesterday we had the opportunity to go to his event for children's pediatric cancer that he holds every year in sarasota and he and lorraine just do an unbelievable job with fundraising and effort and energy and non-stop motion and uh, it's great to see see that he'll be back in motion this week. White misses a pair of free throws for Temple off the Milner foul. It's a lead of 21 for Boise State. Acott, the block. Kick out for Dutri. Acott trying to shake White, throws it up, catches the front of the rim, and we will stay on this side of the floor due to a foul against the Temple Owls and Nick Jordan. Well, Jordan's given up so much power inside. He just tried to do his best trying to block out. Temple actually played very well on that possession defensively, and I'm sure that's what Aaron McKee did with that timeout. He's got into his guys after two just wide open threes. It's like, what are you doing? It's one thing to miss shots, but another thing just to give up open threes and layups like they just did. Right in the key jab who finishes 23 point lead. As the Broncos roll on. Battle hangs in the air and scores. Good job by Caleb Battle coming in from the weak side, catching it in motion, not just trying to go one on one, but off the pass. Kuzmanovic who had a nice first half. Nearly loses the ball, and let's see. Who did that go off of? There is some dispute. And it will go the other way here, it appears. So it will be Temple basketball. 21-point edge for Boise State. Can Temple come back? Stay tuned. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Lowe's. Rod Strickland in attendance today to see his son Ty play for the Temple Owls. Of course, Rod Strickland, a veteran of the NBA, first-team All-American with DePaul, and also a former teammate of Temple head coach Aaron McKee when they were in the NBA together. Played a couple of seasons together with the Portland Trailblazers. And, Tim, you take a look here. Ty Strickland had 16 points in the game yesterday, only two so far. In this contest, check that, three points. Well, that's what happens. You get up at the top of the scouting report, you have a good game like he did yesterday. And, again, Temple just out of sync trying to run their half-court offense. How frustrating is that for a coach? You come out of a timeout, and the first thing you do is turn over the basketball. 
Well, on forced turnover as well. It's not like they came down and had to make a good defensive play. He threw the ball right into the bench. And, you know, it's just a lack of focus right now for Temple and some frustration as well. Acott leading the scoring for Boise State. He has 13. Battle leading the pack for Temple with 11. Hanging in the air and scoring is Keyjab. He's into double figures with 10. A nice move off the bounce. And Boise so patient in the half court. They kind of wait for you to make a mistake or find a mismatch or find a, a spot on the floor where they can attack without the help presenting itself. Williams from outside of the elbow can't hit. Dutrie. Trying to attack. Good defense by Williams. Key jab, no look dish. Milner and one. The Kansas native with the finish. Boise does such a good job spacing the floor. Look at the spacing. They just spread out and then they attack and then with their head up, they wait for the defense to come and bite on the ball with some help. And then there's no rotation on the backside, which allowed Milner just to step right to the rim for the easy one. That's the third foul on Jordan. As a senior out of Kansas, can't finish off the three-point play opportunity as the lead expands to 25. White somehow fights through the defense to score. Well, White did a good job of just keeping his head up and finding a way to a little bit of room at the rim. Just six points in this half thus far for Temple. Shaver on the drive. Beautifully done by Marcus Shaver Jr., the team's leading scorer, heading in to the tournament. Well, this is what happened yesterday. We mentioned it earlier. Temple got down, and then their effort went downhill quickly on the defensive end, and Clemson got anything they wanted. White on the drive and a foul. You see everybody standing straight up for Temple. Nobody in a stance, no, no resistance. Just a wave at the basketball instead of sliding over and presenting your body. You can't play defense by waving at the ball. Pavle Kuzmanovic picks up his first foul. Into Tolbert. Tolbert can't. Get that one to drop. Heads out of bounds. And it will stay with the Temple Owls. Temple just has not been able to put together a significant run in this game. And that's what they're going to need to get back into it. Down by 25. Strickland. Gets by Kuzmanovic. Score it. And one on the drive by Strickler. I'm well, not sure why that basket counted. And I think they're conferring now. They're going to wave it off. There's no, there's no way that basket counted. The foul will be applied on the floor. And for Kuzmanovic, that's number two. But having said that, that was a really good move by Ty Strickland. I mean, he's got... Some real good ability to get his own shot and gonna find a way to get him more opportunities in the half court because he's a very smart player. Jordan's three catches the rim. Inside to Strickland. Strickland up and under and a whistle. And this time he'll be able to get some points out of this potentially with a trip to the free throw line. Well, what you like about Ty Strickland is he's not afraid to go in there with the bigs and he throws his body around. He's got good body control and the ability to get where he wants to go off the bounce. That foul picked up by Dutrieve. It's number one on him. Team foul five to Boise State. Strickland, no good on the second. He knew he missed that one. Approaching 13 minutes remaining in this contest as White checking Kuzmanovic and a whistle. You got to give White some credit for 
getting out there and playing some hard defense. Kind of a careless foul, but at least he's outside showing some effort pressuring the basketball. That's the second on White. Broncos up 24, straight on three. Shaver rattles in. Shooters touch for the Broncos. Well, that's a great play. They run that for Shaver at the top. They little little pin down screen. He comes off flying, ready to shoot it. And that was a deep launch. A foul on the other end, though, against the Broncos. That's Shaver's third. And they're one away now. We're allowing Temple a one and one at least the rest of the way. These arena or this arena far more friendly in terms of the rim, and it's a good block with three-point shooting here for Boise State. Dutrieve missed it, but he's fouled. Boise State shooting it much better from three here than they have all season long heading in. And a run out there with the foul being charged to White. Well, watch Boise after the grid block is they really know how to run the lanes. They look ahead, they got their they have their head up and they're on the move to attack, filling lanes. The old-fashioned way. Dutrieve has the free throw rattle out. If you're Temple here, how do you approach these next 12 minutes? You're in a 27-point hole. You've got to show me something. You've got to show me some effort because yesterday you shut the door on playing in the last 10 minutes of the game and Clemson blew you out. And it's about to happen here as well. And you know, it can't be about your offense. It's got to be, you know, make it hard for the other team to score and not to give them open looks after three or four passes. We talked about it earlier. This has been a Boise State team that has struggled at times this season to put the ball in the hoop. Not so far. Tolbert, though, getting a shot to drop there. Well, Tolbert, the second, the third effort in the lane. Kijan surveying. Layup, left hand, in. Well, that's what Boise does to you because they... They're so unselfish that they know how each other plays out there on the floor and where they should cut and move. They, they're in constant movement. The missed three by Hicks leads to a rebound for Boise State. Kuzmanovic. Into Milner. Milner looked like he wanted to throw that one down. He got blocked. And the Owls on the attack the other way. Great job by Sage Tolbert. The resistance at the rim. He's got it here. Ball off the leg of Williams, and then he gets undercut inadvertently. And that leads us to a stop on the floor. Boise State up. Temple trying to forge a comeback. Sorry. The three-point shooting, Tim, has been exceptional for Boise State. Well. You know how to get your shots, you space the floor, you've got confident shooters, you play with each other, you're unselfish, and on top of that, the defense is not giving the effort you need to get out and contest shooters. But basically, that, that's it in a nutshell. I mean, Boise is a really good, well-oiled machine offensively. They have a lot of guys that can make plays, and they know how to move the ball against the defense and kind of take what the defense gives them. And they've done that all day long. 11 three-pointers for Boise State today, 11 of 17 from three after that horrific start to the season from deep, and they are getting very balanced scoring this afternoon. Jeremiah Williams will get his opportunity at the line after the foul to Lucas Milner. So the one and one, no good from Williams. Not a part of the issues for Temple as well. They have not shot it well from the free throw line throughout this season. Better today, but not right there. Key jab. Foul line J and a whistle on the shot. Well, that's frustrating for Aaron McKee because coming out of the timeout, he changed defense. They went to a 2-3 zone, and they played it well, and they contested the shot, but just got a piece of the arm. First on Tolbert, 
And this has to be a frustrating day for the Temple coaching staff. We mentioned, obviously, head coach Aaron McKee, another part of that staff, Mark Macon, former Temple great as well. Second shot is in. Macon standing behind the Temple bench. An assistant to Aaron McKee. Williams, the block. Tried to throw it outside, and that's going to end up out of bounds. Get a look there at Mark Macon. One of the key figures in the late 80s for Temple basketball. Helped lead them to the Elite Eight. You know he's burning inside right now. There's no. <laughs> These guys have a lot of pride as Temple alums, Temple coaches, and they got a lot to try to fix here with this team so far because, again, it's one thing to be careless on the offensive end, but you've got to just keep grinding on defense. That's a part of the problem. I mean, they gave up 75 to Clemson yesterday. We've got over 10 minutes left, and Boise State's at 68. Looks like they're going to surpass that. Three is short. As Hicks could not get that one to fall. Dunn tries to go glass. That's no good. Armush rebound. Well, Boise is so consistent on the defensive end. They've got their hands up. They're playing in a stance. They're, they're playing as one unit. They help each other. And then they have great positioning on the glass. Key jab. Looked like Key jab tried the old Steph Curry there where he shot it and then turned and looked to the crowd. Uh, the list of guys who can pull that off is extremely short. Yeah, Leon Rice does not want him to do that, but uh, <laughs> he makes up for it on the other end. He takes a charge. Coaches will forget anything if you take a charge. He's coming out of the game, but he took a charge. This is what we were talking about about Boise. Look at the rotation on the backside. Kijab gives his body up, but the other three defenders were also rotating down, getting in position to rebound the basketball or help if there was an extra pass. Just one turnover for the Broncos in the second half. Efficient basketball. Aycott at 10. Armush. A kick out, straight on three. Aycott connects. That's what you call the extra, extra, extra pass from Boise. Unselfish play. And battle popping out to catch. Foul. Look at this. The pick and roll in the middle of the floor. He draws the second and third defender, kicks it back out, and before they could rotate the extra pass to Aycott. This is what will make Leon Rice's seafood dinner tonight taste good <laughs> when you move the ball and play unselfishly. 12th three-pointer of the game, by the way, for Boise State. That's the fourth foul against Shaver as Battle knocks through the first free throw. I mean, there's no second thing. The number one thing on the offensive end you want your team to do is play together. And when they make plays like that, that makes you feel so good as a coach. Like, we're, we are headed in the right direction. We're doing the right thing with this basketball team. 32-point lead. Najee Smith with, with a crossover outside to Dutri. Smith with a save. Inside, nice look from Armush. Back to the basket, layup is in from Najee Smith. His first bucket since that three-point desperation heave to close out the first half. Nearly stolen there by Kuzmanovic. Well, Boise State now just putting on a clinic on how to run half-court offense, make the extra pass. That time Armush with the dime drop. Fadeaway J missing, and we'll get a loose ball foul coming up. This will be on Boise State. And that will put Forrester at the free throw line. Off the second foul from Acott. Ten, 
Forrester good on the first. He was third on the team in scoring last season. Trying to provide a defensive presence, add some scoring as well. Gets both there. 73-41 game, approaching eight minutes left to go. Clemson and St. Bonaventure to follow next in the semifinal, first of the day, here in Charleston, South Carolina. Jaleel White with the feet out to battle. He'll launch and hit. Good job by Battle just to kind of slide up as his defender was helping on the drive. Good recognition. One of the few clean looks he's at. Battle in double figures. Tip pass stays with Boise State. When we come back, Temple trying to desperately put together a run down big to Boise State. Welch back with you in Charleston, South Carolina. Tim, big semifinal coming up next on ESPN2, St. Bonaventure and Clemson. Well, it's going to be a great game. There's no doubt about it. When you talk about the guard play of both teams, it's very special. You know, how do the bigs of Clemson handle the pick and roll? How do they handle the guards? You know, I think it's going to be a terrific half-court execution game. Both teams really like to run their sets. Uh, they get organized. They'll run when they have to, but they really run some good stuff from side to side. So it's going to be, a, I think, a basket for a basket game. And now for our game track brought to you by Dollar General. 15 turnovers by Temple converted into 21 points by Boise State. They've shared the basketball well effectively as a part of their efforts here this afternoon. Up by 39. Make that 41. Or, excuse me, 31. I wasn't great at math in college, I apologize. I didn't want to say anything, Derek. <laughs> I wasn't going to say a thing. I'm going to let you dig out of that by yourself. <laughs> three is good. But when a game gets out of hand like that, you're, you're excused for a couple lapses. Because we've seen a lot of lapses today from Temple. Armo stripped. And the Owl's back to it. White. The kick out, and that ball tipped. No. The Owls believe it was tipped, but the officials say, nope, Boise State basketball. Twenty-eight point edge for Boise State. If you're Temple at this point, looking to find some kernel of positivity heading into Sunday. As Armouche hits the deck, leading to a whistle. Well, Temple, Temple's issues for the second day in a row started on the offensive end of the floor where they just didn't, they weren't in sync. They were taking quick contested shots. And then from that, Boise got on transition. And then everything was compounded here in the second half because they just didn't get down and dirty on the defensive end. Armouche, oh, an air ball from the big fella. He's wiping his hands on his shorts like, well, the ball slipped out of my hands. That's always, the, that's always a good look when you shoot an air ball. He's blamed the ball. <laughs> For Temple, battle with 19. Tolbert, the next highest scorer is Williams with a drive and the finish. That's one of the challenges also for Temple, Tim. Who is that second score for this team? Right, and I don't think they have one. I think they have they have to get a, a good balance, and that'll make battle better if everybody just contributes. Nobody just tried to do it on their own. Just kind of just take what the defense gives you, and they've got some good athletes and some guys that can finish. There's White again in transition. You see the ability. He's got some toughness. He's got good length. Well, nice looking freshman. I think he's a keeper. He's a guy that's going to get better. He can guard a few different positions out there on the floor. Acott into Armush. Smith gets a step on the baseline and a foul on the drive. Feast week rolling on through November 28th. Some of the teams participating 
That's a pretty good group, part of the AP top five. Now Villanova, the, the Villanova-UCLA game <laughs> from that Saturday night in, U, in L.A. or Friday night in L.A. I, I don't know what night it was. The game was on so late. <laughs> it sipped at 11.30 <laughs> Eastern, but we found a way to stay up and watch that one. Just an unbelievable classic and two teams that are they're there for real. There's no doubt about it, and we all know how good Gonzaga is. Michigan clipped the other night at home, and that was surprising by a very good Seton Hall team. Zags and Bruins, one versus two. 43rd all-time meeting between one and two. And that has to be a, an early statement game for both sides. Well, you know the great thing about college basketball in the last 10 years or so, and, and ESPN does a, a ton of credit for it because they put together a lot of these matchups early in the season, saying, listen, if you guys will play each other, we'll put you in prime time. So it helps recruiting, it helps the game, it helps you build interest in the game early in the season, where in the past, I think a lot of these teams wouldn't play anybody early, and people don't catch on to college basketball until January, but I think the interest level is much higher now because of these really good matchups, and then the great tournaments even, not only this weekend, but more fit, going to next weekend, you've got the Battle of Atlantis with some, an outstanding field, the Orlando tournament is terrific, and, and we just showed you some of the other games as well. You look at this feast week as a litmus test for a lot of teams around the country, and we'll find out a lot. Michigan coming off of a loss to Seton Hall. They're trying to bounce back as well. Yeah, Michigan, I think Michigan just had one. Listen, they lost to a very good team at home, and the Big East has been terrific. I believe they're 6-2 and two against the Big Ten in the, in the battle. DePaul beat Rutgers last night. Uh, Xavier beat Ohio State. Uh, Providence went on the road, one at, at uh, Wisconsin. So there's been uh, the Big East early has, has, proved, has shown that they're going to be a very, very good conference. Williams on the runner. He scores. Foul trouble, by the way, for the Owls. Nick Jordan with four. With just over four minutes left to go. 24-point lead for the Broncos. Armush. Well, that's an easy call. Jordan risking that fifth foul, but my goodness. That's number two on Armush. A little tidbit for you here. Derek Jones just with a 24-point game. Early season surprise. How about George Mason the other night? Uh, Kim English, first year coach, 4 0 going into Maryland, beating Maryland. And then we talked about Seton Hall, the great win at, at Michigan Providence. I've seen them practice. They're, they're, they have men. They have four or five fifth year seniors and a sixth year. They won at Wisconsin and Florida for the first time in seven years this past week, beat Florida State. So Mike White's got a very good team as well. The mid-majors, certainly something to watch as the early season develops. White, hanging in the air, gets fouled. Two free throws on the way for Jaleel White. It was a little chilly in here earlier, but it's starting to warm up because the St. Bonaventure fans are starting to flock in from the streets of Charleston. And uh, they'll be very excited. And I was told later yesterday that don't say the fans from St. Bonaventure just come down here for the weather. They come down here to watch their team. <laughs> they go to the moon to watch their team, and, and they do. They have a great loyal fan base, and uh, the atmosphere in this building yesterday was pretty good. Like the Riley Center. It was a home game, essentially, for St. Bonaventure. Well, let's hope some Clemson fans got in their car this morning. The football game's not till tomorrow. <laughs> they can come down and watch basketball for a game. They don't have to get prepped today for football. Near strip by Tolbert. That game, by the way, Clemson St. Bonaventure on the way. Shortly after the conclusion of this one, Max Rice, his three is off. Tolbert rebound. Williams, step back three. Jordan, offensive board. He can't get it to go. Battling amongst three players for Boise State, and Rice comes away with it. Well, Jordan's another good-looking young player as well for Temple, and, and you know, he's 
overmatched physical wise, but he keeps getting in the weight room. He's, I like his energy and effort. 24 point lead for Boise State. Time running out for the Owls. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Shriners Children's, the most amazing care anywhere. And Dollar General, where you save time and money every day. Well, Boise has been led the last two days by their 6'8 point guard, Emmanuel Acott, and he does it all for Leon Rice. He's just a guy that just seems to be in the right place at the right time. You've got to get right up on, in his face to contest from the outside, and sometimes that's not even close enough because with that length, that ability to elevate and that soft touch, he makes things happen. And uh, this tournament could be the takeoff point for Emmanuel Acott because he is playing with a lot of confidence. And he is our player of the game, brought to you by Shriners Children's. 16 points today. He had 24 career high yesterday in the loss against St. Bonaventure, averaging 20 points per game through a pair of uh, tournament games. And that's huge because we talked about no more Derek Austin Jr. Looking to fill that void, and he's done an exceptional job here over the last two days of really stepping up offensively. You know, that's why you come to these tournaments. You, know, you want to find out about your team. You, know, you might not know these things. You see, you watch practice, but, you know, stepping up against different competition and a really good level of competition in the American Conference team. You had St. Bonaventure ranked in the top 25. You know, what do you have as a basketball team, and what do we need to do moving forward? And I think Leon Rice has learned a lot about his team here so far. Five seconds to shoot. Baseline drive, layup is in for Max Rice. The hits keep on hitting. The extra pass again for Boise State, moving from the weak side to find yourself available for an easy shot. Falling to the floor is Hasir Miller. But a foul on Boise State. So Kuzmanovic will pick up the whistle. Under three minutes left to go as Miller makes his way to the free throw line. Philadelphia, Pennsylvania native. Trying to add his name to the scoring ledger for the first time today. One of the few bright spots in this game for Temple. They are shooting the ball better from the free throw line. 12 of 18 out of that last time out. Heading into the tournament, they were shooting just 54% from the line. Not going to win many ball games doing that. Full court pressure trying to extend. Disrupt. Dagan Hart gets blocked as White got his hand up. Dagan Hart, he'll try a three, no good. White rebound. That three is in. So Quincy, Adam Okoya with the triple. I think they're going to take a look at it. He might have uh, had a little Kevin Durant, his toes right on the line. Oh. Hopefully no Brooklyn Nets fans are <laughs> hanging with us. Bring up. Bring up. There oh, you go. Yeah. Size yeah. 15s. Hurt you. You nailed it. The Durant special. This play will go the other way here. 2.18 left to go. So Boise State will play on Sunday afternoon. Meanwhile, for Temple, they will play at on Sunday as well. Where, where do you go from here if you're Temple? You've got another game left in this tournament, and you've really not put your best foot forward through the first two games. Well, you've only played four games on the season. You've got a whole season ahead of you, and you've got today, rest of today, clear your head, watch some tape. Uh, you better get in the gym tomorrow. You better get in the gym, go through some offensive sets, and try to you get a win on a Sunday. You're feeling good, better about yourself. You're not feeling great, but you're feeling you're not feeling horrible like you would if you go home 0 and 3. That's for sure. And and then you can build on it. And you know every game is a learning experience for a young team. It's what you do with it. You know if you just 
brush it off and keep doing what you're doing, you're going to have a lot of these nights because the American Conference, the, the teams in the top half look like Boise State. You know, when you're talking about Memphis and Houston, that's even a different level. SMU is very good. Tulsa is always very good. I think Cincinnati is much improved this year. East Carolina to me looked pretty good last night. I watched them play Oklahoma right to the wire. So the American Conference, UCF's good. is a very good league. So they're going to have to step up their game. And they can. They have the ability. They have the coaching staff to do it. And it's just that they want to take the coaching and learn from this. You've got to be able to take some hits from the coaches and say, listen, why are you playing defense with your hands down and you're standing straight up? That's effort. Clear, clearly. That's their issue. Two minutes left to go as Sam Winter making his way into the game. He's got it here. Pryor crossing over. 6'9 guard. Gets it back. He'll launch. Catches the rim. And the ricochet out to Miller. Miller gets stripped by Rice. And it stays with the cherry and white of Temple. Just over 90 seconds left to go. Boise State will improve their record to two up and two down on the year. The first semifinal of the day will follow <laughs> shortly after this one. St. Bonaventure ranked 22nd in the country to take on Clemson, who had the emphatic win over Temple yesterday. The steal, Pryor on the move. Pryor goes glass and puts it home. Well, that's the tricky part of these tournaments, though, Derek. You know, where, what you do with it from day to day, and I'm looking at the Boise side of it. You know, they didn't come out here feeling sorry for themselves. They, they lost a tough game to a very, very good team yesterday. They said, okay, we're pretty good, and we're going to show people we're pretty good, and I'm sure that's how Leon Rice and his assistants approached it last night, and they came ready to go today. They were very impressive on both ends. Dagenhart. 45 seconds left to go. Out to winner. Pryor gets blocked after the fancy dribbling maneuvers to get to the rim. Coaches are looking at each other over there on the sideline like, excuse me. Uh, I guess maybe you are a guard. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a handle. <laughs> At 6'10". Winner. Jumper up. That's no good. Tipped around and grabbed. The bench of Boise State really want Winner to get on the board here. Hicks, turnaround Jay, it's a little off. Pryor skies in the air for the rebound. And Pryor will dribble out. Boise State, season high in points. They bounce back after the loss of St. Bonaventure. It's an 82 to 62 win for the Broncos against Aaron McKee's Temple Owls. And Tim, an impressive performance by Boise State. Tapped the buzzer, Boise didn't relent. They kept attacking on the offensive end, spacing the floor, running their stuff, going inside, running pick and roll, running stagger screens. And when the Temple overhelped, they gave, they made the extra pass. They knocked down shots. They found people. They spaced the court. And then on the defensive end of the floor, tremendous help, good on ball pressure, forcing turnovers, and great on the glass. Another big performance from Emmanuel Acott, who had 16 points. Clemson, St. Bonaventure, ranked 22nd in the country. That will follow first semifinal of the day. The second one coming up at 7, also on ESPN2, Marquette and West Virginia. And let's welcome in Boise State head coach Leon Rice. Coach Rice, congratulations on the win. Take me through the emotions of the day after yesterday, the loss to St. Bonaventure, great bounce back win. Yeah, you know, we got a lot of guys that like to play basketball, and that's, that's what I told them. Uh, these are great opportunities. You know, you can 
you, I give them about two or three hours to pout and, <laughs> and to, and to kind of uh, work through that emotion. But then we flushed it, and, and we came out and played great basketball night. I think we had 25 assists, and, and we were clicking pretty good there for a while. I know, Leon, when you're sitting in the summer at your palatial mansion in <laughs> Boise, you're drawing up all these plays, you and Fuey up in yeah. Spokane. And yeah, that's his you, palatial. Yeah. <laughs> well, you, I'm just saying, I saw some of those plays today, and I know it, you didn't smile, but inside you're saying, this is the way we're supposed to play basketball. Right. The extra, extra, extra pass. It went on out inside, then it came back outside, then you reversed the floor, then you made the extra, extra pass on about seven or eight occasions in the second half. I know that must have made you feel good. Yeah, that did because I have a lot of belief in these guys for that reason that, that I know they'll play that way, and I know then our shots will stop, start dropping when we, when we do play the right way. The game rewards you, and it certainly did today. And, you know, that's what these games are for, and that's what the early November's for, is to kind of let your team take shape, find their roles, and, and then become stars in their roles, and that's what they're starting to do. One of the cool things towards the end of the game, you got some of your reserves in, yeah. and your bench really excited to yeah. see those guys achieve. How about that excitement for your team? And it's an appreciation for all of their hard work. Those you know, up and down rosters across the country. Those those kids are working hard, running the scout team, doing a lot of things. And and so, you know, I want our guys to appreciate their hard work, and they always do. And so, you know, we got great chemistry within our guys, and our guys love to play together, and it certainly showed today. Coach Rice, congratulations on the win on the Sunday. All right, thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Leon Rice and the Boise State Broncos grabbing the win against Temple. Coming up next... St. Bonaventure and Clemson in the first of two semifinals here in the Shriners Children's Charleston Classic. An impressive performance by Boise State. They are able to shut down the Temple Owls for our entire crew. I'm Derek Jones. Thanks for joining us here in Charleston. It's an 82-62 win for Boise State over Temple. Clemson, St. Bonnie's up next.